Hi everyone, I'm Ken from Crypto Trading KS. If you're new, welcome and welcome back, KS family. Let's run the numbers. Bitcoin currently up 2.52% to 42842. Ethereum up 5.12% to 3241. From my 30 plus years in financial markets, I explain the smart money mindset to assist you to be more of a financial blessing to yourself and those you love, gaining real wealth in the process. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. Just as cryptos go through pullbacks, we too go through life pullbacks. If you're going through one now, please know that our love and healing thoughts as a community are with you. You're not alone. There's always hope and the sun will come out again. Rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. This is really, really important. When Bitcoin goes up, we expect the crypto market to go up, 99% of it at least. And when it comes down, we expect the reverse. When we look across the market, what do we see? We see green. Does that mean Bitcoin is coming up? Absolutely. Looking at Bitcoin's price action gives us a lot of understanding where the crypto market is going. We can see Bitcoin has reached a level of support at that 41,933. We need to get across this immediate level of resistance at around 43,264. Then we can head up to the resistance, a stronger resistance at 44,840. If we manage to get up to 49,305, this is actually really positive for Bitcoin and the entire crypto market. Many people have been perplexed by Bitcoin's recent price action, but over six weeks ago, we called out that Bitcoin could do this. It could come down and test these lows here. And that's pretty much what it's doing. With the institutional smart money mindset, we look to understand the patterns playing out inside the market. And when there are telltale signs, we just pay attention to what those might mean. This was done quite some time ago. You can see here episode 358 on December the 5th, 2021. I know a lot of particular commentators out there are calling for the end of the bull market. I just don't see it. It's just a probabilistic distribution playing out. <laughs> By the way, somebody asked, who's this little guy trapped in the corner? That's our friend, Robert. Robert loves drama. Something a little bit different. For the masterclass students, please use the EC method. Okay, we're going to look through some various cryptos that are showing fairly good momentum and have been showing reasonable momentum for some period of time. Let's have a look at these guys. What do we see here? Near is doing quite well. It formed a higher low and a higher low. It's actually looking really solid. It also is starting to break over this resistance at the top. Please note that there's an incredible difference between retail investing and smart money investing. When we lean into a position, we never buy at market. We always buy in layers of support down. And using the 10-5-10 fund, we can take advantage of long tail rejections like this, but in the opposite direction. One thing that really perplexes people when they get into crypto for the first time is just how incredibly volatile it is. Price can literally go from $8.88 all the way to around $18 and then straight back down again. Welcome to crypto. And of course, it can do exactly the same. It can come back from 18 and it could come back to 10 and go straight back to 18. That's why we use a 10-5-10 fund we make volatility our best friend. So if you're drawing this chart up, you would see something like this and this overcoming of resistance just up here. For example, something like this. What you want to do is buy back to support. Even it's possible that you could come down below this support. This is what crypto is all about. You want to use that volatility for your advantage. And please note, where you buy makes your profit first and foremost. When you're analyzing your cryptos, it's really good to understand where has the previous peak been. You can see I've just drawn it out. 
have a look at Rose. It's really rallied hard. It's coming into an area of resistance. We would expect some technical pullback as there be a lot of people saying, wow, we've done really well on Rose. Let's sell now. And we'll see how much momentum Rose has inside it. You can see on many other cryptos, current price is below that previous high from that first wave down. That's what we're looking at. Let's have a look at Syscoin. Syscoin has been doing really, really well, and we can see this really nice level of support. If you wanted to get into Syscoin, of course you buy in layers down, always expecting the price is negatively biased and looking for long tail rejections like this to the downside. They can be incredibly profitable. Just like it's incredibly profitable to sell these kind of spikes, to buy the other ones, the long tail rejections down, is incredibly profitable, but for the opposite reason. You're just buying so well. Let's have a look at Luna. We can see Luna is just slightly under its support. It needs to get back above this. What about Phantom? How's Phantom going? Fairly well, but this is not the kind of support line that we've seen in Syscoin. Syscoin's support line is much, much stronger than Phantom's support line. Just keep that in mind. So we would look to different things here. We would look to the fact that there's a lot of consolidation down here underneath this level and hence that's what's been pushing price up. Not so much the support line in this case, horizontal support. We can see rows coming into that level of resistance. There are people there that want to take profit. So we wouldn't be at all surprised if we could get a long tail rejection coming down to these previous levels of support. But keep your eye on this because this is quite a spiky one. Of course, I'm not recommending you get into any of these. What I'm simply doing is saying there's always opportunities in the market. Let's have a look at Matic. Matic support line is quite strong and it's broken above that particular support with some degree of power. That's really good. And we can see that it's got a level of resistance around the 253.5 mark. So just keep this in mind. What about Arweave? Arweave has a relatively weak support line here and it's above this area of consolidation. We don't quite know what could happen with Arweave. We may get some negative bias happening. Just keep your eye on that. Dusk is not bad in terms of its line, but it's under resistance at the moment. We could expect a little bit of turbulence around the 77.32 mark. I said previously in rule 45, no alt can escape Bitcoin's gravity. But what does this really mean? And what does it look like in the chart? This is what it looks like. That blue line is Bitcoin's fingerprint. Now, what we're seeing here, see this uptick in Bitcoin. Look at that, this uptick. This is driving the alts. This is really, really fascinating. It's the directional bias of Bitcoin that pushes alts up and down to varying degrees. And that really depends on the alts internal mechanics. But please bear that in mind. When things come down, we'll see the alts move in the same direction. Sometimes they go out of phase, but gravity is gravity. It will always pull things back eventually. Let's have a look at some cryptos that are following Bitcoin's fingerprint at the moment. We can see CHR finding a level of support and doing a technical bounce here. We always look for these technical bounces. Axie Infinity is still under resistance, but you can see how closely Bitcoin's fingerprint matches Axie's price movement. Unbelievable, isn't it? What do you think will happen when Bitcoin starts to break out? to Axie. We must always make three in advance probabilistic choices with any crypto that we enter. What will we do if it goes down, if it goes up, or if it goes sideways? All smart money investors and traders make these decisions before they enter. The retail mindset is incredibly different. Retail only considers one direction. And if we think about that, that's really problematic because price is always moving in a wave. That in fact is rule four, price moves in waves. So we can see even from Bitcoin's action, it will move down and then up, down and then up and down and up and so forth and so on. It's just part of the mechanics of the crypto market. 
when you're looking at your beloved alts, just keep in mind what is happening with Bitcoin. For example, if Bitcoin passes this particular resistance coming in at around 42,971 and then attacks, for example, 44,812, you would expect to see your alts actually mirror the directional movement of Bitcoin's price, but not in the same percentage. The alts move orders of magnitude more than Bitcoin. Compared to the alts, Bitcoin is rather boring. It's like, oh, Bitcoin, you don't move around much. And that is actually good when prices are going down. But when things turn around and Bitcoin starts to move upwards, the alts are a really, really great place to be. So let's go back to the alts currently moving with Bitcoin. We can see Axie Infinity really moving with Bitcoin. Now, what if Bitcoin collapses down? Well, of course, Axie is going to go with it. And just keep that in mind. That's the important thing to realize. But we're seeing signs that the market is hitting a technical support level. What about SAN? Look how well it's following Bitcoin's fingerprint. And it's all about the directional movement. Sometimes what you actually see is a much, much more pronounced increase in price of an alt relative to Bitcoin. And that's exactly what you want to see. That's what the alts are there for. We can see that sand is still under resistance. CRV, it's under resistance, but we actually know that when Bitcoin decides to turn around and party, CRV will do very well. It's exactly the same with Axie and SAN and CHR. RLC, well, the other thing to take a note of, how do you actually make money in any market, but especially crypto? You buy when the price is coming down. Why do you do that? <laughs> Why do you do that? The reason you do it is that it's much better to buy, for example, at $4.50 than $6.50. Of course, that makes sense. When price comes back up, you've actually done quite well. I'll just do a couple of percentages here. Okay, all done. What do we see here? CRV has come down to that low point of 38.48%. It's reduced and I haven't even taken it from these tips here. But what happens when it comes back up? It goes back up 62.98%. Just bear this in mind. That's why we always say buy on the way down. Does that mean you end up holding a loss? Yes, you do. Absolutely. Is that bad? No, only if you sell it and the market goes against us. But if you buy at spot and you buy into a good project, you have nothing to worry about. In time, these things will all sort themselves out. Let's continue. This is really, really important. The concept that it can come down 38% and go up 63%. That's a bit of a hidden dynamic inside markets. That's why I created the concept of the 10-5-10 fund to help people understand that if they buy at a specific price and it comes down 50%, when it goes back up to the same price, it's actually increased 100%. If you can buy on that way down at support levels below, not caring to pick the perfect top and the perfect bottom. Perfect timing is a myth. And the certainty trap gets more people in trouble than anything else. Don't try to capture everything. That's a hallmark of retail thinking. You want the smart money mindset. That is what our channel, our community is all about. Looking at RLC, we can see RLC is under resistance, but it's very close to breaking out from that. The next level of resistance will be this 3426 mark and the higher one. 4, 3, 11. And what if Bitcoin goes the other way? Then we have to be aware that that can happen. Always be aware of those three dimensions of price movement. Before I started talking about that, everybody in crypto seemed to just be latched on to one perspective. This, because, this is because the retail mindset is very much about it must go just one direction. It must be going up or it must be going down. And that puts blinkers onto the concept that price is always moving in a way. 
smart money investors and smart money traders they don't think in terms of that they think in tricolor or three-way decision making they're always thinking if it goes up if it goes down or if it goes sideways and they're making their strategies accordingly I'm putting this analysis in because I love tracking these things with you. It's really quite interesting to see this particular process unfold in real time. Okay, we've looked at RLC close to breaking out. T-Fuel is also close to breaking out. They have to get above resistance and then form what you basically see if they start to break out. What we'll get is a bit of price action, probably up to a level of resistance, a pullback to potentially retest that support line, making a higher low, and then it will go for the next one. Okay, let's have a look at MANA. MANA is still under resistance, as is DENT. We'll just keep our eye on these day by day. It's really fascinating to keep watching what's happening real time. Turning to the community favorites, and of course, I don't endorse any of these particular ones. I don't endorse any crypto. It's really up to you to do your own research. Look into it. Be comfortable with what you're putting your money into. Experts do not know your needs, and it's important you understand that. And definitely one size does not fit everyone, and it never has. Let's have a look at VRA. VRA is definitely following Bitcoin's fingerprint. We can see that with Bitcoin's fingerprint in the blue line. It's still under resistance, but a lot of the crypto market is. We can see Icon doing the same. Many people look at a particular beloved crypto and say, oh, what's happened to my crypto? Bitcoin happened to your crypto. That's really important to keep in mind. Sushi, let's have a look at Sushi for Barry. What we see here, Sushi is still under resistance. It's seeking to make a higher low. This is a low, this is a low, but this one is higher. It's seeking to create a trend. Let's see if it can hold on to that. It's got a lot of sell pressure in here, which is squishing it down. What about IOTA? A lot of IOTA fans in the community. We can see IOTA is starting to break above this once resistance and turn it to support. Don't forget, this is all about Bitcoin's price action. So many people when they're new to crypto, they never look at Bitcoin and they do so to their very, very big disadvantage. You can see how many cryptos are actually following Bitcoin's fingerprint. KSM is doing so. VET is doing so. Audio is doing so. Cartesi is doing so. When Bitcoin decides to get its act together and start behaving, oh, Bitcoin, you're so naughty. We can see for the past five days, Bitcoin is actually coming up. It's rejecting lower prices. There are a lot of buyers down here pushing the price of Bitcoin up. We've got a level of resistance to overcome, but we're quite close to doing so. You can see that has been rejected at the moment because there's a lot of sellers as well. The sellers in the market want to push the price down because shorts are entering the market for the first time in a long time. This is actually what will propel Bitcoin up. Please, if you're going short, please be very, very careful. This could be a wipeout. For example, more and more shorts are being called into the market. We've got really low liquidations at the moment. 136.27 million across 41,440 traders. We can see over the past 24 hours, more than 65% of these liquidations have been short. Like I'm saying, the shorts are being called into the market. They're getting a reasonable amount of certainty. And you know what happens when certainty reigns. The opposite price action is actually expected. Many traders from the stock market and the forex market use traditional candlestick pattern analysis to understand what's happening with crypto. And often what they find is that crypto eats those old fashioned technical analysis tools for breakfast. That's rule 234, crypto eats technicals for breakfast. That is what led me to actually expand all the knowledge and upgrade candlestick pattern analysis. I explained these methods and techniques in the Crypto Trading KS Masterclass. You'll hear people talking about the Masterclass from time to time on this channel. That's what it's about. That's what they're referring to. 
Crypto technical analysis is far more than just drawing lines on a chart. Rule 774, master yourself to master the market. Crypto technical analysts are devoted to creating a positive excellence life trend. That is living with integrity, decency, kindness, fearlessness, courage and honor, inner and outer peace. It can sound quite strange. Why would crypto technical analysts even be bothered with such things? Aren't they just after money? Well, money in and of itself is just a neutral tool and money without meaning is simply another form of poverty. Having a positive excellence life trend is what it's all about. Integrity is so critically important, especially when it comes to analyzing charts. People without integrity can analyze a chart and mislead people. We don't do that in crypto technical analysis. The other thing to bear in mind is that emotional control is incredibly important in every profession. Crypto technical analysis is a profession, just like a doctor, engineer, lawyer, accountant, teacher, and so many other disciplines. We don't want a highly emotional surgeon when you go in for an operation. That's not what it's about. Professionals are cool, calm, and collected under all circumstances. For example, looking at the Crypto Fear and Greed Index, we're at 22, which is extreme fear. Yesterday was 21, which was extreme fear as well. These are the absolute best times to come in and buy. When there's extreme fear in the market, that's when crypto technical analysts lean into positions. That's when they go in and actually start to accumulate in layers, but they never go all in because they have emotional mastery and emotional control. Controlling fear is quite difficult to do and because our society has never been taught how do you control fear? What are the steps that you need to take? How do you live a meaningful life? All of these things are hidden from society's view. People have to hunt them out. With crypto technical analysis, using the CTKS method, you don't have to hunt anything. It's all inbuilt. There's always a lot of bad news floating around the economic system. Disease, wars, all sorts of problems. When we look at C19, there's 313.7 million cases globally. Yesterday, there were 2.19 million new cases. So how are the markets reacting to this? That's the incredibly important thing to be aware of as crypto technical analysts. What we look at is simply the truth of the chart. When we see the airlines index, the airlines index has been coming in or coming up. We can see a series of higher lows forming. This is really positive. We can see that there's an area of resistance that the airlines index is going to come into but this is a very positive sign. We can see some of the other indices coming down a little bit, but this is all part of price moving in a wave. It looks pretty decent. If the airlines index and the other transportation indexes were all falling off the chart, just dropping down, we would get worried, but we're not worried right now. They're doing the exact opposite. Masterclass students, when you reach the appropriate area, you will get this chart. There's a lot of noise in the media and press about inflation and what it can do. What we do as crypto technical analysts, we look to the truth of the charts. We're interested in that because the charts tell the story. What we can see is inflation expectations are on the increase. And we've noticed a very strong correlation between Bitcoin's price and inflation expectations. We've seen a bit of a divergence recently but that can be for its own reasons. I look at these divergences as positive structural divergence, which means that I believe Bitcoin will be on the way back up. And a lot of people say, no, Bitcoin's coming down. But I believe those people are thinking from a retail mindset, not a smart money institutional mindset. Masterclass students, you will also have this chart when you reach the appropriate section. The large amount of debt inside the Chinese property market, over $1 trillion of net debt, is probably the most systemic risk that we face as a global economy. However, what we can actually see is many of these share prices are actually improving. They're turning around. Let's just zoom in here. We can see in early November, many of these Chinese property market 
very high ranking debt firms, debt laden firms, were starting to turn around and Evergrande has been turning around since the 17th of December. The charts don't lie. Masterclass students, you will also get a copy of my live chart that I go through each day. So what we've seen is the transportation sector is looking okay. We can see that there is a lot of debt within the Chinese property market, but it's not really affecting those stock prices. Of course, the US denominated debt holders are on their own and the CCP is said as much anyway. But safeguarding the local Chinese economy is really, really important to the world. When we look at the interplay between stocks and bonds and crypto, we can see various levels of risk. Crypto is really, really high risk. The stock market is less risky than crypto, but way more risky than bonds. And we saw in November 2020, the stock market was around $95 trillion worth of capitalization. When investors feel that their money in stocks needs to be taken out, we see bond prices going under extreme demand and bond prices shoot literally up the wall and bond yields shoot down because of the inverse correlation between the two. We can see a money flow between crypto and stocks into bonds. When bonds, bond prices go down, we see the opposite. But what's happening inside the economic system right now? We can see that the amount of fear inside the US market, which accounts for approximately $56 out of every $100 placed into stock markets around the world. So therefore we need to track it. The fear is coming down. What does that mean? The prices or the levels of the indices are rallying up. And that's exactly what we're seeing with the NASDAQ 100. We see the price of oil coming up. That is a definite inflation driver. What about the price of bonds? The bond price is just literally fallen off a cliff. It's done a little bit of a bounce. What about yields? It's done the inverse. In the past, there's been a very, very high correlation between bond yields and Bitcoin's price. This is why we like to look at yields, but it is also a very, very good understanding of how the economic system can melt down. If bond prices go directly up the wall, we do need to pay attention. They're not doing so at the moment. Let's have a look at gold. It's done a technical bounce. Maybe there's some issues with Russia and Ukraine and the US and China and India, but I tell you, they're always, always existing problems in the, in the world at any one time. We can see the DXY is trying to get above this level of resistance, the US dollar currency index, and not having a very good time doing it. Again, we see a lot of divergences. That is why I have been leaning into Bitcoin, because the overall structure of the economic system, despite all the papers saying it's the end of the world, and of course, what else are they going to say? How do, how do they sell their subscriptions if not that way? Let's just have a quick look at the top cryptos. We can see Bitcoin has come into a technical level of support. Of course, we expected a bounce here and we're going to see a bounce across the entire crypto market. Ethereum coming into a similar level of support and bouncing. Look at Binance coin, so strong. This is a really good sign when Binance coin comes in. What it basically means, at least to me, is that People are demanding more BNB because Binance as the world's largest crypto exchange is actually paired to many, many cryptos. BNB increasing despite burns and a variety of other things is really all about people's confidence being restored into the market. We can see Bitcoin coming up a little bit and we can see Binance coin coming up a lot more. Sol. In, into that bounce and we can see these things they just play out across the entire crypto market cardano poor old cardano charles where are you still under resistance xrp still under resistance as well but looking reasonably good there's got some strength in xrp the price chart will tell you the story of what's happening dot dot is kicking up now and Luna has been doing really, really well. It didn't even come down and touch that support line. It did get close, but it didn't make it very powerful. 
I'd like to thank the very kind and generous community members who've reached out and bought me a coffee on buymeacoffee.com slash crypto trading KS. Thanks so much, everyone. We've got a couple of new comments in here from Badger. Badger says, learning so much in the masterclass, every lesson has new things I would have never learned otherwise. Delivering past all expectations. Thanks so much, Badger. The masterclass indeed has new information inside every single lesson. When I was teaching first and second year stats, I made sure that my students understood the foundations before moving on to more complex things. It's really important. <laughs> Thank you, Richard. <laughs> the redder the better. 10510 Ken, the great crypto disruptor, aka the rebel who turned crypto TA on its head. <laughs> Thank you, my friend. <laughs> Snacks. Thank you also going through the masterclass and enjoying every second of it. As someone who struggled in school, I appreciate the practical nature of and continuous layering of knowledge at a pace that's easily digestible. For my learning, just in time knowledge is a game changer. What I actually did when I taught first and second year stats, I taught all the concepts through the numbers one, two, three, four, five. Just as Richard said, I am a definite rebel when it comes to education. I want people to actually understand what they're looking at and creating practical examples is the hallmark, the foundation of everything that I do inside the masterclass. And thank you to Raptors L for your very nice comment. And Josh, enjoying being your student and learning how to fish. I never share private conversations. I always log out when I'm looking at these particular things because I think private should stay private. I love going through the comments on YouTube as well. Thank you, Flamingo. I don't fear the red days. I look at them as buying opportunities. Well done, my friend. That is what it's all about. Brandon, just started the KS Masterclass and it's packed with tremendous value empowering lives that is what it's all about my friend welcome to the club tails tails said <laughs> i love this one with the recent sell-off i noticed that there is still some fear in me not fear the prices will never recover but fear in setting my buy orders too low and not having them filled <laughs> i love it tails as a result i put them too high and spread across too many cryptos consequence i missed out on some nice wicks which why i would have already bought me into profit just learning Focus on three to five cryptos and set the 10510 fund in as many layers down as possible, even if you can't imagine prices going that low. Well done, Tails. Beautiful. Thank you, Art, for your very kind comment. We have such incredible community members and we are a family, like an extended global family. We all talk to each other and scammers last about three seconds on our channel. Jack, what a what a way to paint words, Jack. <laughs> Thank you so much for the masterclass. I feel like <laughs> I feel like Jack says Jack and your lessons like the magic beans. Of course, Jack is talking about Jack and the magic beanstalk. Wow, what a cool thing. I planted those beans and the beanstalk has started to grow. How beautiful. As I learn the lessons from these videos, I'll climb the beanstalk and will eventually get above the clouds. Awesome. When I become competent, I'll steal the, <laughs> that golden goose from the smart money giant and it will provide golden eggs for many years to come. Just fantastic, Jack. <laughs> Looking on a little further, Jason. I see you walk the talk with what you teach in the real wealth section of the masterclass. Absolutely, Jason. Thank you for your kind words, my friend. We also had some really good macro questions. What would happen to crypto markets if Russia invaded Ukraine? The first thing we would see before any invasion was gold would would be that gold would start to spike. We've seen a technical bounce from support. It's more like saying there is a technical bounce at the moment. But your concept about Bitcoin in the treasuries is really good. The Ukrainian government has about two billion dollars worth of Bitcoin, about 46,351 of them. If, for example, Russia took over Ukraine, I don't think the first thing would be to sell all the Bitcoin. 
in the Ukrainian treasuries. In short, it could create a little bit of turbulence, as all wars do. The greater issue is that if the Russia-Ukrainian conflict triggers a larger global conflict, that's really what would be, we would be focusing on. And if that's the case, we know exactly what's going to happen to gold and bond prices and yields. I also really like Jojo's concept, smart money layers. Why don't they just buy OTC over the counter to avoid any price fluctuations? Just think about this. If you're an institution and you're buying over the counter, somebody's selling it to you. Are they going to give it to you? And if they're going to give it to you, why don't you just say, I want Bitcoin at, well, the current price is about 42,700. I just want it at 30,000. Okay, and they're going to sell it to you at that. OTC always moves the market. There's a lot of mythology out there. There is always demand and supply playing into every market. There always needs to be a buyer and a seller. A potentially good way to think about it, if you want to buy Bitcoin at $10,000 via OTC, that would be a really tough ask. Just maybe think about it like that. There's always supply and demand inside every market. One of the questions that Detective Kimball, what a cool name, asks interest rate hikes, faster tapering, what impact will that have? Will it crash the market? There's a lot of historical analysis that, that has been done about interest rate, and they've found that there's no significant statistical relationship between increasing interest rates and what the stock market does. And this has played out over decades and decades and decades. There simply isn't much of a correlation long term. Interest rates can go up and the stock market can rally. Interest rates can go down and the stock market can rally. I believe a lot of the taper tantrum has been already factored in. Jerome Powell has done everything possible to make sure that the markets were prepared. And quite seriously, if we think about what is happening with Omicron and the world in general, it's quite possible that they'll actually have to increase tapering later anyway, no matter what. One thing you might like to think about, with a couple of million cases every day and infections soaring like this, we're actually entering a new era of this particular virus. And when we think about how many cases exist across the world, governments are kind of trapped at the moment and smart money knows it. I'd like to thank Oscar too. The little thumbnails I do, Oscar really loves them. Thank you, Oscar, that's really nice. Let's go back and have a quick look at Bitcoin. We can see it's getting there. It's still above that support level of 41,933. That's a really good sign. It's coming up to resistance, but it's showing a degree of strength. There's a degree of resistance as well, as noted by those spikes, but it's moving in the right direction. Let's see what it can do. Always have the potential in your mind that price could come down to this 37,406, or it could come up to this 44,818. The more probable, the more likely is that it comes up to the 44, this particular level, say 44,800 would be an appropriate level for this, and then seeks to make its way up to the 45,881. But there is always the potential we could have a last hurrah down to the 37,406. The most important thing is don't go from a sense of certainty. Just have your three-way decision-making playing out every time you look at the market and every time you look at the alts. In that way, you'll sleep really, really well at night and getting rid of stress is really important for your health. I thought it might be really nice if the community would like to, to talk about worthiness and uniqueness. It's such an important concept. As people, we always have a fundamental problem with self-sabotage and self-doubt. Having self-doubt really leads us to engaging in behaviors that can sabotage us. And the problem is we don't even know we're doing it. When you understand how unique you are, that is the critical thing. Your uniqueness makes you automatically worthy. I always say, if you're breathing, you're worthy. End of story, full stop. You're absolutely worthy. And you deserve kindness, love, meaning, and every success in life, financial and otherwise. The key is 
to understand that uniqueness is a special gift that is only given to you. It will never ever be given to another person and only you can fulfill your uniqueness in the world by positive contribution, a positive excellence life trend. A negative excellence life trend, such as scammers do, maybe they're unique in some way, that's not going to create any fulfillment. Those people will live on the edge their entire lives. It doesn't help anyone. But when you come from a positive excellence life trend with your uniqueness, you can literally change the world. I would love if people would like to share about the concept of uniqueness and worth. I reckon that could be really, really interesting to discuss. I hope you found the content useful. Please consider sharing and liking this video if you think it will help others. Thank you very much to our moderators for keeping our community safe from scammers. And I'd just like to let everybody know there were so many beautiful comments that I wanted to read out, but it would take so long to do so. If I missed your comment, just thank you so much for making it. And please say hi and let me know if you have any questions. If you would like daily updates on price movements in the crypto market, seven days a week, 365 days a year, please subscribe to YouTube. I've left helpful links in the description of this video. Please remember, crypto is volatile. Always prepare yourself for the best and worst case scenarios. Reality will likely be between them. Stay safe out there, my friends. Take care and see you next time. Bye for now.